found me. I remember it. Mm. The ship had left. I was on the rocks below the wall. So he took me to this woman. All I know is I am what I am because of it. I didn't want you to leave me here. And it's a horror because I lost you still. Hello? Can you see it now? If you're not going to get me across, then you just have to forget me. I'll forget you. <laughs> you forget me. Am I ever going to see you again? Um, um, first of all, Nicholas, thank you for your time. Thank you for the opportunity on, in, on the, for the interview. Um, and then uh, we see congratulations on the film that is you know, about you. to come out. Um, the thing is the fifth of uh, February, right? The, Correct. Yes. The the one thing, Mayor. Uh, obviously, also thank you for you know giving me the opportunity of uh, reviewing it. That's I, mm -hmm. I really had a lot of fun uh, watching it. And it, to me, it's an amazing world that you that you tried to build with the with the movie. So I think one of the first questions has to be what is the information behind this world this universe that you tried to build with the amazing, uh, the, the one thing there. Thank Well, first, thank you. Thank you so much for watching it and wanting to talk about it. Um, I, I think the a lot of the inspiration is a mix of a bunch of very, very different things. Um, part of it is, I think, a, a very childlike love of fantasy and escapism and, and, and uh, these ideas of places. Um, I've talked about this a lot, but I, I, I'm very drawn to locations and worlds more than I am events or, you know, whatever is happening within them. And uh, I think that's certainly something that cinema allows very different than, than other forms because you, you sort of see it, but it doesn't, I don't think we see it a lot the way it is in novels or even in video games or things like that. And with the restrictions that we had, uh, I think we wanted to make something that just felt like a place. My hope was to make a, a film that for the people that it worked for and liked, if people got to see it, it was something that you could sort of watch and go to and, you know, it can just be this experience, but it's, it's a mix of, I mean, Lord of the Rings certainly and uh, Wuthering Heights is, is probably the biggest direct influence on it. Um, I love Wuthering Heights stuff. So. Um, this this question is kind of obvious, but I, I'm pretty, pretty sure everybody will know the answer to it once they see that the movie and they see the trailer, right? Mm -hmm. um, how did that that the, I, I'm, I'm going to ask it to, to me. It's pretty, I'm pretty curious about it. How did the title came about? The one thing mayor. I mean, we That's know. I, I know. Obviously, on whoever anybody that watched the movie is going to understand the title behind it. But I want to know what what you know what what what's your what's your take on it. So the first version of it I wrote, um, the first time I had a script that had that title on it, I've been writing sort of versions of stories that have all been rolled into this one, but I think it was somewhere around 2012. And I don't know, if I, I wrote the initial bit like basically like in a week and then, you know, wrote this title on it and I don't really necessarily, it's one of these things I, I, I kind of can't remember where the title came from. And then at a certain point, the title, you know, I think the title is like a, tr like a triple entendre or something. Like I think it has to, you can read it a bunch of different ways and depending on my mood, I'm like, this is definitely what it's talking about. So I don't know. I mean, I, I also think like a couple of years ago, there was a point where we were like, maybe this title makes no sense. We should probably work on this, but it never, um, you know, some parts of the movie kind of fight back against you and the title just seemed to never want to move. And um I love it. Now I'm trying to title other things that I want to make. And I'm like, how do I get a title like that? <laughs> so I, 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 you know. No, I, again, the, I need a question was kind of obvious because it, you can see it. Obviously, even the trailer, you can see it in the movie. Uh, mm -hmm. 
the, the correlation between the title and, and the story, but I just felt to me, you know, it's different. It's unique. I think the title was yeah. made it unique. That's the way that I that I saw it. To me, many things that stood out. Uh, the story is one of this, one of them. Obviously, the 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 visual effects about it. I mean, the whole this whole world that you you created with the visual effects and and the the soundtrack and the score. Mm. Those are the, mm. the three things that in my case case stood out. Um, let's talk a little bit about obviously creating this world. Um, I did a little bit of research, and and you shot this on a on a warehouse, right? On we a, we shot it largely. It was over like a period of like a year and a half that we were filming because we were raising money as we were as we were shooting. In the initial piece, we had a, a crew of about five or six people, and myself included. And that actually, there's more practical stuff in that section, which is the first 35 minutes of the movie. Then in the rest, that's like partially Nova Scotia and the East Coast of the United States. Um, and then all the rest of the, the latter two thirds of the film are largely in a warehouse in Patterson, New Jersey. And that we, you know, I'm, I was like a theater kid. So there's a version of me that's like, oh, we can build this set only needs a porch. So we're going to build like a little, you know, like a little porch and then we're going to move that around. We're going to use the pieces from the porch and put together this other set and that's like sort of what we did which um i think for a lot of times like for actors and i just love actors and um i think a lot of times you hear people saying like oh it's very hard to act on a green screen and you're talking to mm -hmm. a tennis ball and those sort of things which is true but it kind of allowed us a different sense i think it felt more like a like a black box theater production you know it was looser we did it more times once we were in the warehouse it was looser the first section was you know you got one take and we were kind of outside or inside we tried our best but um i think you you answered one of my questions but i, I i'm gonna ask anyway um what was the most the most challenging you know thing of you know shooting in a warehouse with a uh, green screen and and the people around what 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 you consider to be the, the, the thing that gave you the most problems or the most challenging? Well, it's funny because I, you know, in context at the time, the, the warehouse thing was sort of like our final level that we were hoping we'd be able to raise enough money and get to. So when we were there, now it seems sort of crazy to look and be like, we shot this movie in basically this room. At the time though, it felt like we were like on, on top of the world, which I still feel that way. And in that sense, like, honestly, the biggest challenges in the warehouse have nothing to do with the movie. They were the warehouse, that space of the warehouse was otherwise a working warehouse where people made tires next to us. And then someone, there were like other sort of day jobs that were very busy, loud jobs. Basically, we, it was, un, you couldn't film in there before 7 p.m. So everything, the latter two thirds of the movie is entirely, we would start filming basically. We would get there to start at like five or 7 p.m. and shoot all night. So that was honestly harder on everyone, I think, than, than any, of, any of the other challenges. So. Uh, um, I think one of the things that stood out to me um, was obviously the score. And, and I, mm -hmm. I, you know, we, we were speaking, you know, backstage without, without off, the, off the record maybe, that yeah. I already have the, the, the score saved on my Spotify playlist. And it, it, has, a, it has different tones. It may have some mellow tones. It has upbeat tones. It, it, you know, it, it, it basically is like, a, it means like a, a small roller coaster ride of, 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 of tones, of, of feelings or, or different sentiments. Or obviously all, everything goes, you know, uh, at par with what with the story and with, mm -hmm. with with the scenes, how did that score came about? Because to me, um, you know, it's to me it's a word worthy score, and I mean, mm -hmm. it should be looked at it that, that way because of the way, yeah. it, 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 you know, I, I, at least the way I felt that I felt that. So, how did that that score came about? Well, I agree with you because I, I don't have a musical bone in my body, and so I'm able to look at the score and just be in love with it. I I, I love it so much. Um, because Aaron Boudreau is an incredible artist and musician. And uh, I constantly talk about his technical process of making that score and, you know, performing it digitally and, and mastering it himself and all this sort of stuff is, is in no way different than all of the VFX stuff that we did. The fun mm -hmm. of the VFX stuff is you just get to see it. But the score with Aaron was 
really challenging for both of us because it was, you know, the film I think is, is, is dealing in some of the themes and images of fantasy um, that we traditionally associate with fantasy. However, if, if you were to put, which we tried in editing, like Howard Shore's mm -hmm. Lord of the Rings theme over it, it wouldn't work. It would be like this movie doesn't, you know, is very strange, you know, so like the orchestral fantasy score thing was sort of out the window. At the same time, it, you know, it was like a very thin space that it needed to exist in. So it took a long time. Aaron wrote so much music. And I think it was both of us trying to figure it out. Um, and once the instrumentation, once like the cellos and sort of the slower mm -hmm. sounds kind of emerged, then it was like, oh, this is really, um, you know, those are the pieces that I think wound up being very, very moving and, and set the tone for the rest. It's really hard to figure out when you put music in a movie, you know, how the rest of the movie works if there isn't music in it. This mm -hmm. is like, you know, so we were learning on the job, um, but I'm, I'm so, I'm so proud of them. Yeah. No, I, I, I got to, you know, got to comment to you on the, on the score and I, you know, mm -hmm. I, I have it, I, I saved it and I think it's just something that you can just put in there and then just leave it in the background. And, yeah. and it, to me, I'm, 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 and this is really a personal note, I like to work with music. I, if, I, if I don't have music with, around me, I don't, I won't be able to work. And then how can you be typing or saying or, yeah. or listening to whatever you're editing or whatever you're, it's just the type of music. And I, when I, obviously when I, when I he finished the, 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 the movie, I was like, okay, wait, I need to, I need this. I did this uh, uh, score somewhere. Let me find it. I remember on the, on right. the movie key, I, we had the link to it. So, okay, I'm, I'm yeah. typing this. This is something yeah. I can listen to it constantly. And again, I, I commend you for the, the, the score because they put it right up there with scores like from Hans Zimmer, which mm -hmm. I typically use when I'm right. just like when I saw now that I just want to, don't let nobody bother me. I need to, you know, focus on what I'm, on what I'm working. That's what the score did, and I think it helped yeah. out a lot with the with the with the story. Also, it helped out with yeah. the, with the way uh, the 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 narrative of the story. So I think mm -hmm. to me, one of the standouts of the of the movie is obviously is the, the score, but mm -hmm. also the story. It's is mm -hmm. is really interesting. Obviously, we also spoke up spoke about being the whole fantasy world, but again, when I when I ended when I, when I was still finished from the movie, I was like, wow, okay. We we can do so many things with the story. We can go so many where 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 ways with the story and so many places with the story that I just that that blew me away. And I I, I know that the, the pacing may not be for everyone, but I just I felt immersed with the with the story with the whole the whole the whole, the whole world that you tried to create. And and I, we were speaking about we talking about we're talking about this back you know of the record, but. Um, I'm, I'm a huge fan of storytelling and video games that rely on story. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I fell in love with the story of the movie because I felt that there's something that I, that I was living before in front of my eyes. Um, mm -hmm. Was that the intent, the way that when you, when you, wrote, when you, when you wrote the story, when you wrote the screenplay, uh, what, were your, what, 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 what was the intent that you wanted the, the spectators to feel? Yeah, I, I think um, we really, you know, there's so much of the characters' lives and and the story of the place and, you know, how it operates and how people are finding the horses and the, you know, what's the exchange rate, you know, all these sort of like very, the particulars of world building. Um, I love, and I have like stacks of writing about it. Um, and there are two, I look at it in two parts. One of them obviously is the, the restrictions with which you know we were trying to make a very very small movie and also refusing mm -hmm. to make a movie where like everyone was in one room um and then there's also my very real instinct with um the the film which is that i really wanted to remove all of the aspects of it that felt as though they were there for the viewer to ride along the first viewing you know um and uh, one of my analogies that I like to use is uh, the film Casablanca, which is it's obviously taken a, a good deal from. However, you know, if at no point does Casablanca stop and explain to you like what Nazis are, you know. So I sort of was like, 
because that's just the world that we live in. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, it was like, you know, there's probably a fun way to do this where these things aren't explained because they're taken genuinely at a level that as though they are real. Mm -hmm. Um, And so that's what we try to do. We try to remove all of those things, which could, you know, I think some people could find maddening and other people hopefully find it as um, an authentic sense of, 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 escapism and realism you know like it's similar to how you describe listening to music that i'm the same way so it's like you know i listen i love to listen to music on repeat and you try to write and get in a flow or you're thinking about Mm -hmm. something i wanted the film to move that way so you know all of those little fun little bits of exposition or someone being like there's this or there's that over here if you head this way this will happen to me those would be bumps in the in the ride of just like the flow of being like this is real and i'm here now um so I, you know, th- that that was really the hope. And in terms of what we wanted people to feel, I don't, I'm not sure. I think, um, I, you know, if anything, the film is about a question of what does, if magic once existed, how does it affect my life? What is that idea, do? like on a rhetorical level, like what does that do to my life? Um, and I don't have the answer to that. I don't really have, I don't feel like I have many answers at all. <laughs> but the place is made for people to maybe walk around with the characters and think about those questions with them. And you're really watching them think about it. When we were editing, we kept sort of picking little moments of performance of all of the wonderful actors and sort of thinking, oh, th- this is the moment that they're thinking about this or they're just thinking about that. And I, I just love watching people think about things because uh, it's, you know, hopefully humanizing. I, well, I, I understand your 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 answer. I think that's I think that's where people are gonna get away from it. You know, when they see mm-hmm. it, it just it's gonna it's gonna you know it's gonna interact with each anyone if each one of us independently in defense of, mm-hmm. of 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 how you see it and how you yeah. you know experience and, and and how you relate to it. And I think that's and again I, I'm pretty sure that a lot of uh, People that are in, in you know, in the, the this whole fantasy world and and, and this, this universe that you try to create, I'm gonna absolutely love it because that's you know that's we're basically withdrawing withdrawing to it. Um, yeah. I I want to you know when I finish into what we my final question and 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 obviously I'm thinking ahead here. Mm-hmm. I, there's so many things that we can do with this with this world and and, mm-hmm. and with the characters and and everything. I mean it. it what what do we have any other preacher projects with specifically you know the this world uh, of, of the one thing mayor do, do you think that would you do you want to do it for something something more with this with with this universe that uh that you created absolutely um it's a fun it's fun to pick up after the last last question with that as well because i you know this is a unique film for me and for all of us in it i, I don't think we'll make a film like this again in terms of it's i don't know i think it's 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 more of a myth that i think the story itself is more myth than it is about myth um and uh, all of the rest of the stuff that i w- would like to make i have i have no desire to make anything outside of this world for as long as i'm you know make, get to make things if i do get to keep making things um and all of the other stuff that i am trying to you know get lined up at the moment are is is very different from the wanting there in that i think it is Mm -hmm. very rigorous in terms of the world building like there's politics and you know systems and structures and commerce and exchanges and you know sovereign issues all that sort of stuff and so i think my hope is that the wanting there is this sort of like tonal introduction to a feeling and you know a set of questions and like a texture and then I'm hoping to kind of begin a larger work of building out this whole world which you know as someone who is obsessed with different fictional worlds um they really only start to get good after a very very long time <laughs> you know i um, so you know 90 minutes of a fictional world normally doesn't really kind of like you know wet the appetite too much so um also to your point, I, I'm we're tr- trying to we're sort of in the developing stages right now of something that is would be a dream to me and it's very exciting. So hopefully in the next like month or something I'll be able to talk about it more. But it would be longer form, and it would have a whole lot more content and tons of different cities and places. And, um, I mean, next to my computer right now, I have 
about a stack of like a thousand pages of scripts. So <laughs> <That's> <laughs> hopefully, good. yeah. That's good. That's good. Again, congratulations on on the film. Uh, again, in my specific point of view, I love the 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 story or the way it played out, the narrative of the story, the the visual effects is you know, the movie's beautiful. So I gotta you know con con congratulate you on that. Obviously, the score. And and I, I'm no, I, I'm pretty sure that a bunch of you know people like like I myself I'm gonna absolutely love the the, the story. I'm gonna absolutely love the film. So I gotta congratulate you on the, on, on that, and you know wish you the best of luck on, on your on your future projects. Honestly, I I, I hopefully I I I, I want to see more more of this world that you you created, and and we can see more of, of your projects in the future. So congratulations and and, and best of luck in the future. Thank and you again, so much. thank you for the opportunity. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. And thank you.